October is one of those months that can be pretty stressful, especially if you are a new beekeeper, because all through September, our hives were booming, hitting that fall flow. Holy smokes. Check that out. Look at that brood pattern. Holy smokes. I haven't seen a brood pattern like that Before since VIP. Then come October, we peek in our beehives and see that it looks completely different. So I figured I'd make a video of all the things that you should expect to see in October and what things that you shouldn't be worried about, even if you think that it maybe means that something's wrong in your hive. So let's get started. So, huh? What? Good. That's what we want. Good. All right, so first I'm gonna start with one that I know is struggling and see how it's doing now. Cause last time I checked it, it was not doing the best. Yeah, so this is the one that I had problems with. Um, remember that queen you gave me to put in here, newspaper method style? Mm -hmm. Well, this is the one that I put her in on top, and they didn't like that. They killed her. Because, oh. like, she was doing her own thing in the top box while the bottom box was still doing their thing. And then I tried to put her back down, but then they weren't accepting her, so they ended up killing her. Um, so working this comb a little bit. So they had to make their own queen. But then remember, we were gonna come back and put a queen in here, and then all of a sudden there was a queen in here. Just oh yeah. Out of nowhere. Yeah, we did find. Randomly, like appeared. So. Yeah, we did get a queen um, that came back out of nowhere. Yeah, we had that twice. Two hives didn't have a queen, so we brought queens to put in the hives, then went into the hives the day we were putting the queens in to then find out there was a queen in there. <laughs> so like we were like, oh no, take that box off, take the queen, put it here, because we did it before we even checked. So always mm. check to make sure there's not a queen in there first, but. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're bringing in pollen. I mean, decent, but they're not going to have enough food. Well, we're going to have to feed these ones sugar. Well, I'm, you know me, I'm a mountain camp person. I know you are. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm kind of on that side that I don't think the dark um, goldenrod honey is actually good for them through the winter. That's what I've heard. Bringing in a decent amount though. That's not bad. That's not a bad little thing. We got foundationless. Especially because she's gonna only be laying for what, like two or three weeks now. Uh, no, a little bit longer. Well, actually, maybe four weeks, three to four weeks, I'd say. It should. She should be right around her first, right, uh, her first amount of brood. Should be a, about emerging. So the first thing that I notice this time of year is generally the brood pattern. It's not going to be that same full built out brood pattern that you see in the summertime or during a flow. October is really the time the queen starts dialing back her egg laying in preparation for the upcoming winter. Not quite the brood pattern I want to see, but this time of year this is normal. Are you sure they're not hatching out right now? Those could be completely hatching. Well, they could be just had larva. Well, this side, some of them have larva in it because like they're sporadic over here. Oh, okay, that's why it makes me think that they're hatching out and she's trying to fill them as they do. Maybe. Oh, you want me to find her? Oh, you don't have to. I just want okay. to see one more brood frame. Okay. I would like to see... They're hanging out all the way over here for some reason. They've been doing this since I put them in here. Oh, that's better. I've got some bald brood right there. That looks like uncapping. Yeah, that's bald bird. Typically varroa. One more bald bird, two more bald bird. It's that time of year though, so. We'll write it down in the journal. This is also the time of year that varroa really starts building up in all of our colonies because all summer long, they've had the time to just keep reproducing and keep growing so that when the bees start to decline this time of year, the varroa mites are at their peak, meaning there are more varroa mites her bee, meaning eventually there could be varroa mites in every single bee, which will then eventually collapse your whole entire colony. 
But if you're seeing bald brood, this is generally what you're seeing. Um, don't be too alarmed. If you are treating, then yes, maybe this means your mite load is a little high and maybe you should treat. But if you're treatment free and you're just, just straight survival stock, how Casey and I are, then the best you can really do is just close them up, cross your fingers, and hope for the best. Well, you know how this yard is. They'll make it or they won't. We have other heart. We have other yards. That... Yes. We actually need to go check on those. Yeah, we do. But I'm a big believer in having a yard that is survival of the fittest. Yes. Um, this hive, remember the one that I was like, hey, babe, I don't know what to do. This one has a brew disease. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, that's this hive, which then they cleared it up a couple days later. So I thought maybe it was because there's a queen coming back. So I thought that maybe that was the first round of brood that was then being, that then had uh, varroa mites all like flood the cells. Okay. And so it killed the brood. That was my theory on it, but. Okay. It disappeared though. So I don't, it doesn't have a brood disease anymore. At least last time I checked it, which that looks pretty good. I mean, it's a little sporadic, but... Yeah, that's so much better than it was before. Like, it looked gross before. Oh, there's a queen. She's a quick one. We definitely need more food, though. No, we can, um, we can start... Should I dig into these more? No, no, no. Okay. This time of year, if they're not gonna swarm, and they're not necessarily, like, they're propolizing everything the way they want it. If we start ripping apart their propolis, it just causes them to stop working on the things they need to and start working on things they don't. Okay, just a heads up. This is Bellana. She's mean. I expect her to be bigger than that. Did she send out a swarm? It could be a fall drop. Lots of honey though. That's good. Let me take it off the top box. So one thing you'll notice as I'm going into my colonies and probably also as you're going into your colonies is you'll notice that there was a population drop just all of a sudden that right now it's like your hive numbers have just completely cut in half. So when I first started beekeeping, I was very alarmed by this, but I promise you this is not something that you need to be alarmed of. This is actually when all of the summer bees are now dying and all you have left are winter bees in your colony. So this is actually a good thing because you don't want to have a crazy big brood nest going into the winter time anyways because that just means they're going to use a lot of resources that they don't want to need that they don't need to use. Um, so don't start to panic. Your hive is not about to die. This is completely normal. That's something good to see. Wow, they're calm. Why? They're probably working. They've ne they're never calm. They really aren't. They sting me every chance they get. Oh no, you guys are terrible. Maybe their winter bees are calm and their summer bees are mean. Winter bees hurt more. Yeah, they do. I don't want to pull apart any frames. Is this that time of year you'll start, start pulling apart frames? And that is because their propolis gets really thick this time of year. And as it starts to cool temperature wise, that propolis does not want to budge whatsoever. So definitely be careful when you're going into your colonies and when you're taking out frames. So this frame has completely drone brood, which to some they would be like, oh, hey, that might not be a good thing. But actually for the coming winter, the bees will fill this with honey. And this is the exact frame that you want in your colony because now there's going to be more honey on their on that frame than there normally would be because of those larger cells so it's going to be easier for them to access and on top of that it's going to be easier for them to keep warm since they're only going to have to stay really close in that one area oh god what's going on there's some brood on the next frame over yeah, but this is not what her brood frames look like. What in the heck is this? Is she swarm? That's yeah, twice, once in the neck. Oh 
my god, she must have swarmed. This is not what this hive looks like. Did she any eggs? Um, can I get a flashlight? How do I turn on the flashlight? Well, you probably can't see them, but there are eggs. Surprisingly. Yeah. There's eggs in there, so thank god. Um, but... This is not what she looks like. I'm really confused. Got some sticky pollen on this bee's leg. What the heck? Like they were looking so good. Maybe their varroa mite levels are high. No. Unfortunately, she's in the yard that we, uh, Like you saw this hive. This was a four box hive all year. Maybe they're in the top box right now. It could be. Sometimes they do that too, which I hate when they do that. There's a fall drop off bees can have, like where yes. all all the bees that they laid in mass die all at once, and then she yes. has her next round that has to fill it back up. Yep. But that's how. That's how nature works. Well, I like that this box is heavy because that means they'll still be able to make it food wise, but as long as she starts the main wall, they have a decent number of bees too, so she could just be dropping off. She could, she could just be cutting back. They know what they want to survive with. Yeah. I wouldn't be too alarmed. I was alarmed last year when I went into a hive and I saw that, that they were, uh, I had less brood. But that's just what they do in the fall time to prepare. Yeah, yeah see, like, look at that honey. Like, they're they're fine. See, that streams drop off to me. Like, yeah. They, they know what they're doing. This whole top box is like. And what if, you ever stop and think, maybe what if they take a certain amount of bees know what's happening with the varroa mites, so they just take and leave with them? Well, I almost wonder if they force their own brood break. If they know their varroa mite levels are high. Then, because I noticed that with the hive I had last year that I named Lucy, that had 60 mites in a wash, um, they completely stopped laying. Like, if the mite levels are too high, she completely stops. So, it forced them to have that sort of, like, brood break so that the varroa mites then flood all the cells, like I always say, on the first round of brood and then end up dying. So, Well, I, I, just, I just know it's not going to be the commercial guys that save us from varroa mites. It's going to be us backyard beekeepers. We're the ones that if we lose five hives, we have, it, there's a difference between losing 500 hives that you need for pollination, you have to, you have to treat. Yeah. And then there's the hi people like us that have, you know, say 50 hives, but mm -hmm. if we lose 40 of them and we rebuild from those 10 over the years, eventually we build the stock that everybody wants, everybody needs. Because yeah. we don't lose 500 hives worth of money if we lose yeah so it makes sense for why the commercial guys they can't they couldn't they, fathom they ever need doing us that. yeah like they they can't they'll lose too much like it's their it's their livelihood so and i get that i think that we got to start seeing that like as backyard beekeepers or even intermediate beekeepers it's sort of going to be falling on us to actually fix the genetic lines mm -hmm. yeah so for sure. that's just my opinion <laughs> oh they're climbing up a tree <laughs> Keep some mice away. All right, let's see how. Oh yeah. <laughs> These I mean, nicks are booming. I took out one frame. Just to keep, because I'm curious. I mean, they're all on the frame working right now, so it's not like they're, like, I get that people think that they should be all up on the top bubbling over, but that's actually... Not this time of year. That makes no sense to me why you wouldn't want them down there working the frames. Especially this time of year, you don't want them bubbling. That's going to be too many bees, and they're going to blow through their, their sugar stores. Okay, I don't like that I have this frame in here, but... We got tons of frame to replace it with now, though. Yeah, we should switch this one out with something. Let's, we'll go through the hives first. So we yeah. can give them the hives that survive. We'll give them all the best comb we have. Yeah. Oh, my queen's on this side. Oh, she's blonde. Oh, she's pretty. This one was mated here, right? Yes. 
That's this one was a late summer one too. This one was um, like a July, August. You remember how Vips Queens had that slight tint of purple to them? She has yeah. that off hue of purple. She does. She. Where's she at? I don't want to squish her. Um, she rolled around to the bottom. No, she must be up there somewhere. Okay. Yep, she's right there. Okay. Well, they're doing their thing. Yep. Yeah. Nope, they're happy. Should we switch it out right now? No. I'm going to go through all these, and I'm going to find all the best comb we have. And then we're going to... We could just grab one. Okay, as long as... Okay. You only have a couple minutes. Okay. Like, I don't want to keep you... Like, you got that... She has a very important B class that you guys should all attend her next one. <laughs> yes. Yes, that is tonight. And though it puts us in a rush... Yes. We would rather... We would rather also get out oh. beneficial information. Because it's not just about bees. It's about changing the landscape of bees. God. Welcome to the propolis in this yard. It's so bad. It's so bad. Oh, yeah. That's OG for you. Chicote. Oh, yeah. you. I have a couple of her at the house. Oh, good. We she have, has a certain color to her comb. We have one of every genetic line that's important to us sitting on our porch at home. <laughs> and they... Oh, yeah, they're good. It's tilted, so Shoot. when I lift it from that way, it feels lighter. Yeah, no, I made sure all the all these all face downhill. Oh, I need to fix this then. So yeah, no, for winter, you're going to want to put it the other way so it faces downhill with them. That's pretty good. Yes, yeah, we got... I'd say four seams of bees up there. This one. Ah, this one all year has been like oh a God. up and downer. Like No, I'm, this one's been fucking or, sorry. This one this is <laughs> this one's been booming. Oh, is it this one that was for the one next to it? What didn't, Yeah, some of these have been up and down. Some of them went like straight up lane worker and then went on lane worker. Oh, what's going on up here? Why is it all wet? That's, oh, is moisture getting in? That very much could actually be small hive beetles. Slime. It could be wax moth too. Small hive beetles. We got to get those traps in. Oh no, this hive is doing so good too. But then again, if there's oh, up. Oh god. You're joking, right? This hive was doing so good. What happened? They are falling vic victim to nature selection. Um. They took a small hive beetle beating. But this hive was so strong, they would have had to swarm or something. No, they didn't manage their hive beetles the way they should have. They probably let them run all over. You gotta remember, survival stock is survival stock. They'll either live or they'll die. And yes, we are willing to take massive losses if we get the queens that we want. Is this just getting robbed now? It might be. Another one bites the dust. Shoot. This is the one I was excited about. Remember, we put the experiment in experimental beekeeping. Yes, we do. I don't know. But it is so hard for me sometimes to be like, oh my god. But that's what works for us. She keeps she keeps worried about the numbers. I keep worried about the experiments. And then we find a happy medium in between. And, and then the occasional like, we really need to be doing this. No, love. Think about it. Be patient. <laughs> yep. Be patient. Okay, this time's getting robbed. They abandoned. All right. Perfect. That sucks. Yeah. This hive was doing so good. They must have just... Yeah, but at least if it gets robbed out now, then other hives will take and get stronger. Like... Yeah, there's quite a bit of honey in there still. That's why the small hive beetle took over. They should be getting robbed out faster, actually. Should we move some of those frames? 
Not today, but there's too many high, too much robbing going on with it. Yeah. I'm, I'm making some new covers. Yeah. They're a couple years. They're a couple years old. I'm afraid to take this off. Ooh, that's alarming. I don't think I've seen any bees coming in there. Okay, I'm not taking the cover. I'm just gonna do this. Decent. Yeah. They don't have a whole lot of honey stories, so we definitely get shings on it. Mm. And I can tell that just by feeling the <coughs> weight, guys, for any new beekeepers, the weight's important. The more you beekeep, the more you're going to be able to kind of tell just by picking them up. That's not bad. Good market. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, do I don't want to do that because they worked hard to properize that. Ooh, this one feels heavy. Looking lovely. These are the ones that were weak or two. These are my oh. late splits that I did. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it was like the third week of July. So they didn't really have a queen in them until like the second week of August, mm -hmm. I think. And then I just strengthened them with the... Uh... Ooh. These are doing better than the ones that were booming earlier. Because that one was booming. That was a split I did like late June. So they didn't have a queen in it until early July. And you see what happened. They left. I think they built up too fast. So timing's important. Plus, I think some of these queens... Did we have any of the queens we bought in any of these nukes? That actually, the one back there, I actually think that one over there. Oh, um, this one? The one that didn't survive. I think that's actually another one that was gifted to us. Oh. I guess we should stop taking gifts, queens as gifts. <laughs> because people like to say, I have good queens, and then they yeah. collapse. As where okay. you have six of our queens sitting there booming. And these ones are and splits these, that I did. These ones are the splits off of... Uh, your OG that's over there booming. Yeah. Yeah, because did. yeah, yeah, they did. But that's okay. that's the point of survival stock. I know it's hard to lose hives, guys, and I know it's gonna suck. But you're not thinking about beekeeping this year. You're thinking about beekeeping seven years from now, four years yeah. from now. That's what are, important. It's important to plan ahead. Like lose some hives year one, year two, to have the best hives you can by year five. Yep. But if you're gonna multi, if you're gonna just coddle all of your hives you're always going to have to coddle all your hives so don't do that let the ones that nature doesn't want get rid of the ones that nature doesn't want mm -hmm. and stop mudding up the genetic lines by keeping them safe and happy and healthy with stuff that's not good for them like fake feeding them and yeah. varroa treatments and I would rather build off of one good queen than a hundred cuddled queens Oh, 100%. And... Huh, they're attacking a small hive beetle at the moment. They actually got one out. Oh, yeah, they... Yeah, see, these guys are actually pulling them out of the hive. That's good behavior. Those are things... We keep we keep a very detailed note. Like, our, our beekeeping's evolved a little bit from... We want 100 hives to... We want... The best hives. Yep. That's what's more important, especially in the springtime. So when you come out and you have strong hives, there's so much you can do with that. Oh, they just picked it up. They did. And they're gonna dispose of it. Huh? That's what I like to see, guys. Well, let's yeah. see which. Let's see what they look like. That's what last one I just opened. This one. Yeah, and this one was so weak, I was worried about it. And then I gave them a couple frames, and now look at them. Like they're doing amazing. And like I said, these were late splits. Like this was like the third week of July. So. Timing is really important. Mm -hmm. I think I timed that perfectly. Just don't do them in August like I did last year. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, then you can't tell if they're good queens or not. No, they're just going to die. Uh, we have a couple more to check. What time is it? Look at that bottom <laughs> board. That bottom board. <laughs> oh. Well, no, really, though. There's like leaves all over. Keep oh, my your, God, it's fall time. Keep your mind out of the gutter, guys. <laughs> Oh, that's good. 
Um, did anything happen with this one right next to it? This was our grafting hive. And then a freaking swarm flew into it and stung all our cells. That's, that did, what did the swarm end up doing? Because once they stung all of our cells, we were like, hey guys, we're just going to leave you alone. It looks like they're not here anymore. They probably re-swarmed out. Yes, they did. Of course she came just long enough to kill our cells and then come back. Yeah. Which is fine. Nothing. Then we have these. This one was too hot. No, this one was robbed so bad. I don't understand. It was so big. Oh, fully robbed. Well, that sucks. Yeah, we do need to close these up soon so that mice don't get to them. Look like they already have, or that might be from robbing. Got on the ground. I honestly think we had somewhat of a wax moth issue. There's not wax moth in any of those, though. That's from robbing. They're, them chewing up the comb. Oh, yeah. You probably... Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Mm, it could be doing better. What's the bottom box look like? We might be able to condense these guys down into one box. Yeah. Might be that time of year for them. Yeah, we can condense them. Yeah, we'll condense them. But these, okay, can we can we state that, guys, these are genetic pollination hives. Yes, they are. Oh, every, keep talking. Every one of the pollen, every one of the... <laughs> they move so creepy. Don't they? Don't Look like... at its butt. It's got like little polka dots. I don't like that at all. No, it's weird. But yes, guys, these guys were the genetic pollination hives, so we can't guarantee much about these guys yes. anyways. We don't, we've never had them they for more They did requeen and mate with what we have here, but they still are at their base from yes. the original genetics. So we didn't, these were always a wonder, a hope, and a prayer. These were doing really good, but... But they're not seasoned for us. Mm, is that your stomach? That was my stomach. <laughs> Someone's hungry. <laughs> A little bit. Oh, this is kind of heavy, too, so that's good. Yeah. They're doing fine. But that's we could be... The size we, be we could be on... We could be on that fall... No, like, okay. we are. We 100% are. It's October. Well, the, the, the first... The first genetic line I ever acquired, it took two years to realize that they had what I called the fall die-off. They would boom all, the genetic line itself would boom all year long, and then it would collapse right this time of year. Yep. And I, it took me a couple of years to work that out of it. This was a strong one all along, so this one's doing fine. Yeah. They're trying to figure out that gap right there, they don't like it. We'll work that out. And then, one more. This one is actually... I'm really surprised that this is actually doing okay. I actually forgot about it. <laughs> yeah. I put a queen in this one. Still bees. What's the bottom look so good? Because this was a really late split. Yeah, it was. This one's only at tops like a month old. Oh, they're building up. They just um, they're just behind because of uh, yeah. we built this one a month late. Ouch! Oh, it's my forehead. Oh, no. He stung me in the forehead. Oh, sorry. Is it still in my forehead. Not anymore. Okay. Ow! My neck, my forehead, my arm. Like come <laughs> on, guys. I need you to do something. Did you leave any in there? There was one, but. Um, yeah, I thought we were going to experiment this year with uh, leaving queens in there and seeing what happens. We are, we are going to. <laughs> then <But>, life. <laughs> um, life kind of happened. Well, but then what ended up happening was we were building pollination, or we were building hives for the pumpkin yard and every one of these got taken out for the pumpkin yard and oh okay i didn't want to try and do it on a half experiment where they they were have to build up because i took all the bees all the frames everything basically 
these guys are these guys were in here now there are pollination hives and if you go over and look at our pollination hives these guys built up flawlessly they went from here into pollination hives and now both of those pollination hives are what 10 deep each i just wanted to make sure that i didn't like none no queens weirdly came back or i just want to make sure that they are actually in fact empty so i can yeah. them up ants <laughs> can be closed up and stored for the winter. That's all I needed to know. Alrighty. Guess that's everything. Oh, he waves. <laughs> um, but thanks for watching. I know there wasn't a whole lot going on today, but we haven't been out here in a while and we need to see what was going on. So thanks for watching as always. And don't quit. Be fit. Oh, by the way, Casey's one that thought of that. So I just want to give him credit where it's due. <laughs> <All right. laughs>